Hi, I'm Harlan J. Burke, President Harlan J. Burke Limited. What I have here is lot 258 in our current sale. It's a lead seal of the so-called Byzantine Empire, which is actually the Roman Christian Empire. And it's interesting because rather than being a New Testament Christian subject, it's an Old Testament subject showing Daniel in the lion's den. And to the best of our knowledge, there's only two of these recorded to exist. Hi, my name is Shanna Schmidt, and I'm one of the ancient coin numismatists here at Harlan J. Burke Limited. I'm going to talk to you about two coins from Crete, lots 108 and 109 in our current buyer bid sale. Crete's very interesting because not a lot numismatically is known about Crete, although they have a very, very interesting history. Crete was once the center of Minoan civilization, and that was uh, from about 2700 through about 1420 BC. It was once regarded as the earliest recorded civilization in Europe. After that, at about 1100 BC, the Dorians came southward and started to inhabit Crete. And after that, there's not much known about it. With archeological digging, they've been able to uncover a lot more um, interesting information on it, you know, being able to tell people that it was a trade city. And it, it flourished during the Hellenistic time period. However, there wasn't a lot of coinage that was minted during that time. The coins that we have in lots, uh, with lots 108 and 109, the first one is from Elotherna, and that one has um, a laureate head of Zeus on the obverse, and then on the reverse, it has a nude Apollo. Zeus happened to be from Crete, and that was one of its claim to fame. Also, lot 109 is from Sabrita, and that has on the obverse Dionysus, and then on the reverse, Hermes. And Dionysus, as everyone knows, was, uh, was the god of libation, uh, wine. In fact, Sabrita was a place where grapes were grown and where wine was produced. Crete had a strong mythological background um, with the stories of King Minos. It's an interesting coinage, um, but there's just not a lot out there. Hi, one of the most interesting pieces in our current buyer bid sale, the 194th, which closes Thursday, July 9th, is lot 302. This is a Minoan sarcophagus from the 14th to 12th centuries BC, better known as a larynx. The Minoans love to put octopuses on their pottery and they also use their sarcophagi as well. There's one displayed on either side of the piece and uh, it just shows their love of these sea creatures. Further, the Minoans took full advantage of the fluidity of the sea creatures to fill and surround the curved surfaces of their pottery in a truly unique artistic style which effortlessly conveys the obvious love these island people had for the sea. Hi, my name is Laura Wakeland and I'm from the World Coin Department at Harlan J. Burke Limited. So there's three things I'd like you to know about this lovely silver Chinese coin. Who's on the coin? What, why they call it the fat man dollar, and what's so great about this one in particular. So the man on this coin is Yuan Shi Kai, who came into power after the fall of the Qing Dynasty in 1911. By 1912, he was president of the Republic of China, but he had a terrible thirst for power, and in 1916, he declared China a dictatorship and named himself emperor. This brings me to why they call this the fat man dollar. Some say it's because of his large stature, and he was larger than average for the time. You can see he has a big head on this coin, but many agree that the big head is not only a reference to his stature, but also his ego. And you do need a large ego to declare yourself emperor. This coin is dated 1914, which is the first year of this series. Many provinces were given official dyes to strike. Once these dyes became too worn, the mint masters in these provinces would recut the dyes, creating lovely variations for us collectors to seek out. You may find one with curly hair or a little O in the bow. Uh, there are several different varieties. This coin, however, is not a variety. It is the original, which is a perfect place to start when collecting the Fat Man Dollar variety set. The toning on this coin is very unique. It's as though someone rained little royal colors of gold and blue and purple all over this coin. If you'd like to take a closer look, 
check it out on our website. It's lot 266 in our current buyer bid sale. Hi, my name is Sammy Burke, and I'm the head of the Antique Map Department here at Harlan J. Burke Limited. I'm going to talk about two maps that we have in the current buyer bid sale. The first lot is lot 331. Uh, it is a map of Russia published by William Blau in 1635. A couple important things to note about this map. The insert plan of Moscow. It was the best at, its, uh, at the time and it was reproduced and used in several publications for well over 100 years after this map was produced. There's also a view of, from the sea of the city of Archangel, which at the time was the only northern port of Russia. This was prior to the founding of St. Petersburg in 1703. Towards the bottom, there's a long wall built by the Russians to protect themselves from invading Crimean troops. Uh, lastly to note is the uh, projection of the Caspian Sea. It is shown to be uh, kind of a wide blob where in actuality it runs further north and south. Very little was known of the Caspian Sea at the time, especially the eastern shore. And lastly, there are a number of uh, decorative elements in this map. A couple Russians in their traditional garb. You have sailing ships in both the Caspian and the Northern Atlantic. There's two swimming polar bears, a compass rose, and a decorative tidal cartouche. The next map we'll talk about is lot 328. It is a map by Benjamin Warner from 1820. What's interesting to note, especially with our numismatic collectors, is the paper used in this map was the same paper being used to produce uh, obsolete or broken banknotes uh, that were used at the time throughout the country. Starting from east moving west, much of the eastern uh, states are the same as they are now, however West Virginia does not yet exist. Illinois had just become a state uh, two years earlier. Michigan is listed as a territory, so is what would uh, later become Wisconsin and Minnesota, which was labeled here as a Northwestern Territory. You also have the Arkansas Territory extending into what would later become Indian Territory and then present-day Oklahoma. And then you have a vast Missouri Territory, which uh, the western region is where this map really gets interesting. There's uh, several notes of uh, Native American villages, including the Mandans and Pawnees. It also notes the site where Lewis and Clark pulled their canoes 3,000 miles from the Mississippi River. As you look south, you'll see a large Spanish territory that also encompasses Texas and runs as far north as to the present-day northern border of California. Much of this area is labeled unexplored country, there is a river, a supposed river, that they believe connected the Bay Area of California to the Western Rockies. And there are also several forts and towns worth noting as far as uh, Texas history goes as well. Hi, my name is David Greenstein and I'm one of the numismatists in the United States Department here at Harlan J. Brook Limited. We're proud to be presenting the Highland Park collection of U.S. coins. In this collection, there are two very distinct areas which the collector focused. The first was in his early days, which happened to be in the 1970s. The collector focused on mint state examples of large cents, but not in the extremely high grades of mint state 65 and 6, where the prices start to get really high. He focused primarily on mint state 63 and 64 examples in brown and red brown, where you can get a very attractive coin without really breaking the bank. His other area of focus was in Standing Liberty Quarters. He assembled a complete set in Mint State 63 or better, focusing on eye appeal rather than focusing on coins with the absolute highest grades attainable. A lot of the coins were graded Mint State 63 and 4, with the finest being Mint State 65. Even on the issues which are readily available in Mint State 66 or better, he still bought them in Mint State 63, 4, and 5 because he could get a coin that has the really nice eye appeal that you get from Standing Liberty Quarters. Some of the highlights from the collection were a 1916 quarter, which graded Mint State 64 at PCGS, and then subsequently got verified by CAC later on. Another coin which you rarely ever see in high grade is the 1918 over 17 S quarter, which graded Mint State 63 by PCGS, and also got a CAC sticker. It was the first example to receive a CAC sticker in Mint State 63 with only a few pieces in four and five out there. Other really nice coins were the 1921, the 1923S, and the 1927S, all in Mint State 63 or finer. 
Many of these coins are still available on our website at hjbltd.com and several examples of both of the cents, the quarters, and a few other type coins that were in the collection will also be available in the upcoming HJB Mobility Auction. Thank <laughs> you.